to say glory. Glory and honor, dominion and power. Now and forever, the Lord God of angels and reigneth with power forever. Greater than all. You are sovereign God. Say God. Great God. presence forever
appreciation and gratitude and thanksgiving. We have reason to, for our hearts to be filled with praise this morning. We have reason to be grateful to God for all he is to us and for all he continues to do in our lives. The Bible says that he that keepeth Israel, he neither sleeps nor slumbers. There is someone watching over you day and night, and therefore you can rest assured, and therefore you can rest secure that God indeed has got your back. Will you celebrate him this morning? Glory to Jesus. Father, we give you praise, Lord. We are so, so grateful. We are so, so thankful for being a father unto us, Lord. For keeping watch over us, oh God. We thank you for your love that never fails. We thank you, Lord, for your mercies that are new every morning. Whatever comes our way, oh God, we know that we can wake up to a fresh dose of mercy from you, oh God. And your word says that it is because of your mercy that we are not consumed, Lord. We give you praise, Father. We say thank you, God. All that we are, all that we have, all that we can do, it's all because of you. And we give you all the praise. We return our hearts of gratitude to you, oh God. We bless your name and we say have your way amongst us this morning. We say be glorified in our midst this morning. We say visit us fresh Lord this morning for we are expectant in the precious name of Jesus hallelujah glory to God will you just welcome someone beside you and you can have your seat praise the Lord we're going to be going into our devotional reading for this morning. And this month, our devotional is on the supernatural lifestyle. You supernatural lifestyle. Remember again that the devotional is available on the King's Word app. And, and also for those of you that might not know, there's something special that Dr. K is doing this month. He's having a 30-day of... Um, a 30 day super school of the supernatural, yeah. And this holds at 1 p.m. on his Instagram channel every day. So do well to join and just get yourself soaked in the lifestyle of the supernatural. Amen. So today's subject topic says stay covered. Stay covered. Ephesians 4 11 to 12. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. One of the greatest strategies of this generation is the failure of the church world to take full advantage of the fivefold ministry gifts. There are uncommon supernatural rewards attached to the ministries of prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and apostles. These people are not just babysitters of the saints. Rather, they are reward carriers from God. The supernatural edification that the head of the church anticipates has been compromised in so many lives because the builders have been rejected. The church is full of a bunch of disconnected, uncovered, and independent saints. This is one of the enemy's plots to stop destinies from being fulfilled. The devil makes sure that rather than connect to your reward channels, you are offended at them. Your relationship with God, as important as it is, cannot take the place of the ministry gates that God has called to serve your destiny. You need your men of God to be fully rewarded. You need to recognize the men who carry the grace you need to become your, pop, to become your purpose and honor them appropriately. Don't be robbed of your reward. Make sure you connect to the ministry gifts that God has separated for your elevation. No more compromised destinies. Come and say, in the name of Jesus, my destiny 
will not be compromised because I will maximize the gifts that God has placed over my life in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that God has given to the church, he's given apostles, he's given prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, all for our benefit. He says for the edifying of the body. He says for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, that the body of Christ might be edified. And so there's an equipment that God has prepared for you in your pastor, in your teacher, in the evangelist, in the apostle, and this ministry gifts that God has placed over you. And I know that in this day and age, particularly with social media, there's a lot that goes on, you know, to discredit men of God. God as it's were, but I want you to choose to, to live by the word of God. That's what the supernatural is after all. What has God said about these people? If there is a blessing that God has ordained that I will experience by being connected to them, then if you are a wise man and woman, then you will position yourself so that you can maximize everything that God has prepared for your life and destiny. There are issues that can be resolved. There are things that can be prevented in our lives when we submit to the ministry gifts that God has placed over us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so this month, I want you to determine that... You know, wherever God has placed you, wherever God, whoever God has, you know, ordained to be the man or the woman of God over your life, that you are going to connect by faith. You are going to submit and you are going to partake of the grace over their lives. Why? Because it's going to benefit you and because it's going to build you. Hallelujah. Let's rise on our feet. We're going to pray for a few minutes. Glory to Jesus. Amen. I want you to say this with me as we pray, as we declare in faith. In the name of Jesus, I submit myself to God's local church system. I am adequately covered. I am adequately edified. And I am deployed to fulfill God's purpose over my life in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your voice and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus and declare that you are covered because indeed you are connected to the church, because indeed you are rightly positioned, because indeed you have chosen to submit to the grace and the authority and the gifts that God has placed over you. Therefore, you are covered, you are edified, and you are deployed to fulfill the fullness of God's plan and purpose for your life in the name of Jesus. Come on, declare that every grace that God has placed in the life of the ministry gifts that God has sent to me, I recognize such grace and I submit myself to such grace in the mighty name of Jesus. And therefore I am built up and therefore I am edified and therefore I am strengthened and therefore I am fully covered and preserved. And Jesus. 
Jesus. Now I want us to pray for this month of April. This is a month of supernatural focus. But I want you to that to be a desire in your heart for manifestations of the supernatural. That this month of April will be a month of no order. I want you to pray that indeed you will experience open doors. You will experience angelic ministrations in every aspect of your life. That the supernatural will be your experience. Come on, lift your voice and pray. In this month of April, I am experiencing the supernatural ability of God upon the works of my hands and my finances and my family and my business and all that I set myself to do. The supernatural is my experience. Things that I cannot accomplish naturally. The supernatural ability of God comes through for me. The supernatural power of God breaks out upon me in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands and give God praise. Father, we give you praise because there is an outbreak of the supernatural upon your people in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You please be seated. Oh, Father, we exalt your holy name. Can we magnify God together this morning? Yes, you're worthy, you worthy, only you deserve it all. Reka telemeno seka baro sila nashte. E zara dela matora delega na masuka para dele mashte ya na ma. Eva no sana ga dele manos. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Ira na no shade na ma. For Jehovah. Glories be your name, Jehovah. Is your name? You are mighty warrior. You're great in battle, Jehovah.
Can you lift your hands, everybody? Alpha and Omega, we worship your name. We bless your name. Come on, lift your hands to him. Wherever you are, lift them to him. We worship you today. Hallelujah. Casting crowns and lifting hands, bowing hearts is all we've come to do. Oh, casting crowns, lifting hands, and bowing. Worship him in your own words with your own song. Somebody this morning, you reign on high. You reign on Jesus, we worship you today. We bless you in this house. Sanda gataya la vere gendo sanda dada O ya la baga de gendo vere keda basha taya la baba ba Ko ya tasa taya la bege de vere keda gaya Come on worship him in other tongues where you are this morning E ya la baraka do sata ya da basha taya Ke la baraka do se ke ya la baba ba You are worthy Lord Jesus you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, we praise you this day. Ayata sata ya la breke do go sana ma ba 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 ba. Oh ye ke la garaka da bashata. We celebrate your grace. We celebrate your mercy. We celebrate your benefits in this house this morning. We worship you. We honor you. Eya la brakata sata ya la ba 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 ba. Oke ta ya da ba sata ya kenda ba sata. Eya da baraka do sata. Oya tapaya. Thank you for your blood. We 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 thank you for your blood. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blood. Somebody celebrate that blood this morning. Oh, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your blood. Oh, we thank you for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. 
we celebrate your blood once again this morning we celebrate your body that was broken for us we celebrate redemption once again we celebrate the salvation that we have in your name we thank you for your resurrection power at work in us and through us we say glory glory be to your name Oh, shaka satayada brakada. Can we just pray fervently in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes this morning? Eketo kataya la ba 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 ba. Reketo kasa kataya la brekedo ya. Your blood was not shed in vain. Your body was not broken in vain. Your sacrifice is not in vain. It's still speaking better things for us today more than 2000 years after eketo sataya tapaya kataya la begedoga eketo sataya la brekedo sata eketo sataya tapaya kataya da ba 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 somebody declare this morning come on declare this say heavenly father softly on the instrument say heavenly father i thank you for every miracle that is available for me today in your blood and as i pray right now i celebrate the release of those miracles in my life right here and now in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray fervently if you believe god for a miracle as you partake of the body and the blood of jesus oh shakata yada barakata every miracle in your broken body every miracle in your shed blood every miracle because of your sacrifice on calvary i claim them now particularly the ones i need this very day eketo sataya kataya gadaga oh somebody open your mouth and pray fervently pray fervently in the holy ghost eketaya da barakata sata eh ya la brekedo sataya la bagadaga yakata brekedo soto pakata yakata egedege yaka we activate the will of god that is in this covenant for us today oh this is the new covenant according to your will and we declare everything contrary to God's will in and around our lives they are taken away in the name of Jesus somebody's chains are falling off again oh chains are falling off as we pray right now as we exercise faith in the blood of Jesus somebody's chains are falling off Oh, shakataya ke de 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 reke to sataya the supernatural life available in your blood lord we thank you it's activated afresh over us this morning in this place right here and now in the name of jesus the life of god in the blood the zoe of god in the blood is activated afresh right now right now Oh, Yakata, I hear the Lord say once again, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, even though he dies, he will live again. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. We thank you, Lord, Eketo, for the life in your blood. Oh, we thank you for the blood. So I will not be silent, and I will always worship you as long as I'm breathing. Somebody sing it to him this morning. I will worship you. I will always worship you. Sing it again. I will not be silent. 
Be silent, come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. Always. Can the pastors please come to the communion table and get the communion elements? We're gonna take communion right now. Somebody worship him. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We worship you this morning and we recognize that in your blood and through your blood every miracle every deliverance and the provision we need it lies therein and as we remember your sacrifice on the cross by partaking of your body and your blood one more time this morning we thank you for a release and an activation of your power afresh over our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you that every need represented here is met in the name of Jesus. Supernaturally, every need represented in the house is met in the name of Jesus. Your sacrifice on the cross that took away our sins in the same breath, in the same vein, brought about a provision for all our needs. And we stand in faith this morning, receiving the supply that your grace provides for us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please come. Can you stretch your hands, everybody? Just stretch your hands towards this communion element. We consecrate this as the body and the blood of Jesus. And as we partake in faith this morning, thank you, Lord, for the miraculous breaking forth in every life in the name of Jesus. Let what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has not entered the hearts of men, let the exceedingly abundantly dimension of the working of your power be released towards every life in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Listen to me, church. As the pastors go and pass the communion elements, I just want you to pray fervently where you are. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your voice and pray fervently. You can play the instruments, but I don't want it to be too loud. H.O.P., you can, you can go back to your seats. We're just going to pray fervently and we're going to release the power of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says the earnest, heartfelt prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available that is dynamic in its working. And I want you to know whatever the need is in your life this morning, the power of God is more than enough. Somebody say the power of God is more than enough for me. I did not hear you say the power of God is more than enough for me. Regardless of the need. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on, declare with me. Say in the name of Jesus, as I pray right now, by the help of the Holy Ghost, I release the power of God, the resurrection power of God to walk in every area of my life, bringing about miracles, signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to pray. Pastors, please serve the people. Begin to pray. Shakato sataya lapakato kataya. Eh, yala breke do sataya la. Lift your voice and pray fervently. Don't let anything or anyone distract you. 
don't let anything cloud your mind but just a yieldedness to the Holy Ghost receive that utterance by the help of God this morning the utterance the Spirit gives and speak it out by faith speak it out by faith exercise your faith consciously as you pray this morning oh I hear the Lord say every need shall be met every need shall be met every need shall be met my blood is more than enough ha! my blood is more than enough oh yakata sata our god is more than able come on pray fervently just a few more minutes pray fervently don't let anything hold you back oh shata kata baba Pack your feelings aside for a moment and pray by the help of the Holy Ghost. Reject every thought of fear. Reject every thought of failure. Reject every thought of unbelief. And pray fervently in the Holy Ghost. Building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Some of you are praying ahead for something that is about to happen in the coming week. This week that we are stepping into. Somebody is releasing a mighty breakthrough on uh, in their life as you pray right now come on just yield yourself to the Holy Ghost you may not know tomorrow but inside of you is the one that knows tomorrow and right now is giving you utterance to pray oh it's gonna be a miraculous moment Month for you it's gonna be an awesome month for you this week is a week of testimonies for you by the help of God yes somebody receive the help of God as you pray as you pray right now help from above heaven on earth help from heaven helping you on the earth meeting your need on the earth help from above marvelous helps of God coming to you right now he is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord.
And we celebrate your body that was broken and your blood that was shed. We remember once again. And we declare the power, the resurrection power available to us in your death. Can you take the seal? Let's partake of the body of Jesus by faith this morning. Thank you, Father. We receive help for such a time as this. In the name of Jesus. Partake of the blood. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kena mashanda busataya lababa. You can be seated in God's presence. Just pray softly on your seat. Hallelujah. 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 You are God, and mighty are your me, your miracles. We stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we bow. Worship you. Yes, Lord, we bow, Lord, we bow. 
and worship you. Lord, we bow. Glory be to God. Father, we ask that you send your word to us this morning. Let it come with power. Let it come with healing and deliverance. Let, we, let it come with the backing of heaven. And let nobody remain the same after receiving from you this day in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, I want to invite everyone to join us on the discipleship journey we have embarked upon this month. This is already day seven. So if you are not yet participating, you are seven days or six days um, behind schedule. Our Father, Dr. K, is leading us through a discipleship school. It's just 30 minutes or thereabouts every day. We pray together and then he shares something about supernatural lifestyle or supernatural living. That's the focus of our teaching this month. Living supernaturally in a natural world. You are in a natural world, a physical world, a visible world that you can engage with with your five physical senses. But then there is more. Somebody say there is more. And God's plan and God's will. In fact, we said last Wednesday, God has commissioned us to live supernaturally. After he resurrected from the dead, one of the major things we established last Sunday was that his resurrection meant a new beginning. And that new beginning was expressed in the commissioning of his disciples. We call it the Great Commission. He specifically mentioned the preaching of the gospel to the entire world. He commissioned them. They had been preaching the gospel before. In fact, the Bible said, God preached the gospel to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 when he told him, I will make your name great. I will make you a great nation. God has been preaching good news. Gospel is good news from beginning. But Jesus said that my resurrection, somebody say his resurrection, has brought a new beginning. And that's what the resurrection of Jesus affords you and I today. A new beginning. Not just in the preaching of the gospel, but in every area of your life. And one significant thing that Jesus said when he commissioned them again in the Great Commission was he said, go. Preach the gospel to every soul. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They will cast out devils. They will speak in new tongues. We lay their hands on the sick and the sick will recover. So he commissioned us to live supernaturally. To preach the gospel supernaturally and to live supernaturally. These signs shall follow them that believe. And you need to know that. You are commissioned, you are authorized, you have authority. Somebody say, I have authority to operate supernaturally. I'm not hearing somebody say, I have authority to operate supernaturally in this natural world. Hallelujah. And it's, it's such a great journey, such, such a powerful journey. The meetings are online, as you can expect. Um, Saturdays and Sundays, the meetings are at 9 p.m. So there's going to be another meeting tonight, 9 p.m. It's on Dr. K's Instagram handle. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. As usual, we'll communicate reminders on the WhatsApp chat rooms for everyone to join wherever you may be. But Mondays to Friday, the meetings will be 1 p.m. in the afternoon. I know some of you may be at work at that time. 
Again, I want to encourage you, if you are unable to join live, you can always join later on demand. For those of you that have missed this first seven days, you can go back and listen to what was shared. Hallelujah. So I want to continue from where we left off last Sunday. Um, Jesus' resurrection has brought certain things to us. We talked about um, a new beginning. We talked about... Um, Someone remind me of one of the things we shared last week. Angelic ministrations, revelation and insight. So there are certain things that because Jesus rose from the dead, will someone declare again this morning his reason? You and I can now operate in. And one of the most important things we can now operate in is grace. Somebody shout grace. Say grace, grace. Say I'm now commissioned. I'm now authorized. I'm now empowered by heaven. Because Christ is risen. To live a life under grace. Grace means unmerited favor. Unearned favor. Undeserved favor. It means you enjoying things you don't qualify for. Things you don't work for. Things you do not earn. That means you and I ought to live life way beyond what we are earning through our natural labor. And I can tell you just for free, every believer enjoys that on one level or another. Now, there may be certain aspects of your life where you think you want to see more than you are seeing today, but no believer can deny that they're enjoying grace expressed in one way or the other. A simple way you can prove that is you will find things happening to you that other people are not enjoying. Things happening to you. Other people went through what you went through. Some lost their lives, some lost their minds, but you are still standing. And it's not because you are better than other people per se. Hello, somebody. It's the grace of God at work. And if the grace of God is already doing something in your life, it's important for all of us to now look into it closer and see how we can maximize the grace of God available to us. Praise God. Somebody say, I maximize grace. Say it again, I maximize grace. I take advantage of it. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 4 from verse 7. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. One of the powerful things grace does for us is it removes mountains in our lives. Zerubbabel was commissioned by God to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And it was a struggle. There was one mountain after the one mountain there speaks of challenges and difficulties. There was one obstacle or the other. And then the word of the Lord came to him by the prophet, not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the Lord. And he told him, who is or what is that great mountain before Zerubbabel? It shall be made a plain. Hallelujah. What the prophet was telling Jeremiah by the spirit of God was that every obstacle in your path. In fact, let me prophesy you to a neighbor this morning. Tell them every obstacle in your path. Every challenge in your path. It shall be made a plain in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every mountain before you, when you read scriptures like this, you put your name there because your name is not Zerubbabel. Am I right? You will be made a plain. And then he now prophesied to him and said, and he, speaking about Zerubbabel, shall bring forth the capstone. Capstone there talks about the final piece of the building that will be put on top of the building. Many of you, I think the simplest example is temples back in the day. They would probably put a golden, um, what can I, like a cap on top of it. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? 
And they usually did that when they finished the entire building. That's, they will now put it there. So from afar, ah, there's a temple there. A lot of mosques still do it today. They put a capstone. So the prophet was telling him that every mountain before you shall be leveled. Hallelujah. And Zerubbabel, you will put a capstone on this temple that God has told you to rebuild. And as you are doing that, you will be shouting grace. Grace. In other words, you will be acknowledging that I did it by grace. I did it by grace. And he said you will be doing it with a shout. Can somebody shout grace this morning? Grace. Shout of grace. You will know that if not for God, I won't have finished this project. If not for God, I won't have been able to get into this business. I won't have succeeded in this career. And you will acknowledge grace. Hallelujah. So two powerful things we see in this text. Grace removes mountains. Hallelujah. And I came by the spirit of the Lord to declare over somebody again this morning. Every mountain in your path shall be made a plain by grace in the name of Jesus. And then grace empowers you to accomplish your project. You will finish well. You will complete that project. You will succeed in that endeavor. And you will succeed by grace. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Listen to me. When the prophet was, when Zechariah was prophesying to Zerubbabel, this prophecy, it didn't look like it. It did not look like it. It did not feel like it. But yet the word of God came to him. Like the word of God is coming to somebody today. Hallelujah. And I want to just share very briefly with us three powerful things about grace. Because like Zerubbabel, in fact, much more than Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel lived under the Old Testament. Under the Old Testament, it was the law of Moses that was in oppression. Under the New Testament, God has replaced the law of Moses with grace and truth. John chapter 1 verse 16 says, Of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace talking about Jesus for the law was given through Moses John 1 16 to 18 but grace and truth another way to say that is grace upon grace hallelujah because the grace of God is the truth of God for you praise God grace and truth did what came through Christ Jesus no one has seen God at any time, but the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him to us. This is where we left off last Sunday. That's the last thing or the main thing we want to emphasize that when Jesus rose from the dead, see, Jesus came to declare God's will for us. From his birth and ultimately at his death and his resurrection, he declared God's intention and God's will for us. And God's will is for you to live by grace. That's the only way you can live supernaturally. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. You've got to learn to lean on God's grace. Lean on God's mercy. Lean on God's favor. Hallelujah. It's not like they did it under the law of Moses where it was as if you were doing something to earn what you got from God. When you read the way God gave them the law, if you will observe to do all these things, then I will bless you. And if you do not observe to do them, then these curses will come upon you. That's not the arrangement we have with God any longer. Can somebody shout a loud amen to that? Jesus has changed everything. Now what we have with God is freely you have received. Glory be to God. And freely you can now give. Grace. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Grace. It's not of him that will let or of him that run. It's of God that showeth mercy. Grace. God did it. 
And the only thing we need to do is to believe it. Hallelujah. And that's where people are still struggling till today. Believe it. When the prophet comes to tell you Zerubbabel, you will finish this temple. Every mountain before you shall be made a plain. And I'm telling you the way you're going to do it is by grace. Grace. Zerubbabel, you need to believe it. Because it's God that is going to do it. Oh, hallelujah. Grace means that we do not take possession of the land by our arm and our sword. But we take it because God has shined his face of favor upon us. Praise God forevermore. Are you with me this morning? Look at that John 1 16 in the Amplified. I always like, every time I share along this line, I always like reading the Amplified translation. John 1 16 in the Amplified. Of, out of the fullness of his um, abundance or the superabundance of his grace and truth. Out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace and truth. We have all received. We have received. What did we receive? Grace, grace. Or grace upon grace. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. Favor upon favor. Gift heaped upon gift. There's a supply from heaven coming to us on the earth. And our part is to receive it. Somebody shout, I receive grace in the name of Jesus. Ah, you are not shouting like I would love you to shout. Shout it, I receive grace in the name of Jesus. And you receive and you receive. I received yesterday. I'm receiving today. I'm receiving this week. I will receive next week. Grace upon grace. Hallelujah. Our part is to receive what God is supplying. And we receive by believing what it tells us. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to labor for it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to qualify for it. Because you can't qualify for it. Are you here this morning? Glory, glory be to God. Number one thing I want to stress this morning is that grace responds to faith. This is how you receive it. You receive it out by faith. Grace responds to faith. Please listen to me very carefully. I'm sure you've heard this before. Grace responds to faith. You've got to recognize the time and the seasons we are living in. The dispensations we are living in. And you may be in the darkest hour of your life. You've got to realize that no matter how difficult things are around you, God is still releasing grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, gift upon gift for you to receive. And many times, grace is receivable. I will even say it this way. It's even easier to receive grace in the most difficult of situations. The person that tells himself, ah, things have gone so bad. I can never receive help from God. I can never receive mercy from God. And you are throwing in the towel, you are losing hope. You don't understand how God operates. And you don't understand how grace operates. In fact, I want to tell you this morning, the more difficult and impossible and unlikely it looks, it means grace is nearer to you. Hallelujah. Favor is nearer to you. Help from heaven is nearer to you. You only need to believe and receive. One of the first testimonies we see in scriptures 
Go there with me to Genesis chapter 6. It was the story of the man called Noah. Perhaps the first person that the Bible tells us received grace from God. Genesis 6. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, But Noah, but, I've told you many times, when you see but in scriptures, it's telling you that everything previously said is quite irrelevant or largely irrelevant. But Noah found grace in the earth, or Noah received grace. That's what it means to find grace. You receive grace. The grace God is releasing, Noah was able to receive it. Look at the conditions that were around Noah in those days. It was a very unlikely situation. Verse 5 says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil, continually. This is how bad things had gotten in the world at that time. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. And we see something very rarely. In fact, we have scriptures that contradict this statement. And so the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry. Or King James says, God repented that he made man. We have scripture that says God is not a man that he should repent. That God should be sorry. That God changed his mind. God doesn't change his mind. It had gotten that bad. That God was saying, I'm going to change, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to destroy everything and start again. But yet, there was still grace being poured out. And there was still a man that was ready to receive. Hallelujah. In that kind of situation, Somebody was still finding grace. Somebody say, I'm finding grace. Oh, say it like you know you're the one God is talking to this morning. Say, I'm receiving grace. I'm finding grace. No matter what has happened. Look at the condition Noah was living in. As dark as it was on the earth at that time, God still found a man that was ready to re receive what God was. I'm going to destroy everything. And because of that man's faith, God saved him and his family. And through him, God started the human race all over again. Is somebody with me? Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I am finding grace. Lift up your hands and declare that over yourself over and again this morning. Say, I'm finding grace. I'm finding grace. I'm finding grace. In the name of Jesus, I am finding grace. Hallelujah. In fact, I love what they said about the early church. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. Acts 4 and verse 33. And with great power or resurrection power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. And what was upon all of them? Great grace was what? Upon all of them. The resurrection of Jesus brought about the supply of great grace. Lift up your hands where you are and say, in this season, I find grace. I find great grace. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Found grace. Noah found grace. Whatever calamity may have happened in or around your life may actually be an opportunity for you to find grace. Am I talking to somebody this morning? You have experienced a setback and what you thought would happen did not happen. It's an opportunity for you to find grace. Hallelujah. There are mountains in your path. There are obstacles in your path. You've done all you know to do and you can't seem to make a headway. It's an opportunity to find grace. Noah found grace. I love this. But 
even in the midst of that terrible darkness. I mean, God was planning to destroy the world, flood the world with his wrath, kill every human being, but Noah found grace. I'm sorry, your situation is not that bad. I empathize. Things may be difficult for you, but I'm telling you, your situation is not what? It's not that bad. With the resurrection of Jesus comes the supply of great grace. Hallelujah. And what we need to do is to what? Believe. Grace responds to faith. John chapter 1 verse 12. As many as received him. As many as received him. Him speaking of Jesus. I mean, John chapter 1 is just the foundation or the basics of supernatural living. It starts from verse 1. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. And we emphasize the place of the word. And he came to his own as grace. But some people did not receive him. But as many as received him, somebody shout, I'm one of them. To them he gave the right to become the children of God. To those who believe. That's how they received in his name. They believed like Zerubbabel. When God told him every mountain in your path shall be made a plain. He believed. Some people don't believe when God tells them things like that. Like that man on whom's arm the king leaned in the days of Elijah. When the prophet said by this time tomorrow everything will have turned around. Said, ah, even if God opened the windows of heaven, can these things be? He came to his own. The prophecy came to him. By this time tomorrow, God is going to change it. God didn't tell them to go and figure out how they were going to turn around the situation. No? But God told them, I will show up for you. Tap anybody this morning and tell them, God is going to show up for you. You are finding grace this season. So don't walk in unbelief. Grace responds to faith. Elijah told him, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. That will not be anybody's ear story in Jesus' name. Because we believe. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. And that's how you receive. Believe. Believe what you have not believed before. We started healing school this morning. Primarily for people that are having challenges in one area of life or the, or, or the other. Honestly, as a pastor, I want my testimony to be like the testimony of, what's that um, evangelist name again? John G. Lake. That the, I mean, the, the history record in his, in his city, Stokey, they gave him, the health ministry gave him an award. Because he used to teach divine health and healing. And there was hardly any sick persons in his church. It wasn't that much of a big church. I think they said there were maybe about 300. This was back in the day. But they now went beyond the church. And people in the city started hearing the word of God. Let me rephrase that. The grace of God. Or the word of grace. About healing and health. And they found that there were more healthy people. Because people just were not falling sick anymore. And how did they not fall sick? They believed the word that God sent them. We quoted that scripture again this morning. He sent his word and it healed them of all their diseases. Delivered them of all their destructions. Believe. Grace responds to faith. When somebody is facing a mountain... And the person chooses, he can see the mountain. It's not that the mountain is not there. Jesus taught it. He said, if you say to the mountain, the mountain is before you. And you believe in your heart. Somebody shout, I believe. And do not doubt in your heart. You will have what you say. Because grace will respond when you exercise faith that way. Hallelujah. Believe. We are not saying there is no mountain. We are not saying there is no obstacle. We are not saying there are no setbacks. We are not even saying that the world you are living in is about to be destroyed. We are telling you that even in your darkest hour, there is a supply of grace. The only question is, will you believe? Noah believed. 
CNN was carrying it. God is about to destroy the world. <laughs> Permit my imagination. <laughs> but he chose to believe. Oh, am I talking to somebody this morning? Number two. I want to quickly share three things and then we'll close this morning. Grace, number one, responds to faith. You receive grace or you receive abundance of grace or you receive the next level of grace by believing. Let me ask you this question before I move on. What can you believe today that you are not believing right now? Whether it's concerning your finances, concerning your health, concerning your job, concerning your marriage, concerning a loved one, what can you believe in God's word? What promise can you believe that you are not believing right now? If you will make the decision to switch and turn on your faith, glory be to God, and begin to believe what God has said about that situation, and begin to confess it and declare it and meditate on it, you will see grace move. Hallelujah. Who art thou, great mountain, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made a plain. Now, specifically, I want to say this to you by the Spirit of the Lord. This is number two. It's still under this point of how we receive grace and how we can experience grace, grace. Specifically, talking about grace response to faith, the Spirit of God told me to, ex to highlight the obedience of faith. Obedience. Of faith. Hallelujah. The obedience of faith. One of the dimensions of faith work is that you obey the instructions that the word of God gives you. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Somebody said the obedience of faith. You know this story very, very well. In John chapter 2, Jesus was invited to the wedding in Cana of Galilee. And they ran out of wine. Listen again to what Mary told them. John 2 verse 5. The mother of Jesus, Mary, his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you. Whatever grace says to you, listen to me, somebody, do it. Whatever he says, one of the ways we measure, there are many ways we can measure faith. Number one, we measure faith by the amount of word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. We can measure faith by the level of rest. If you are in faith, you will not be anxious, you will not be worried. You will not be having sleepless nights. In the midst of the storm, you will sleep on a pillow. Hello, somebody? Another way we can measure faith is your level of obedience. Do you believe what I'm saying to you? Ah, I believe. Do what I say. Just do what I say. Obey the instruction. What was the instruction? Fill the water pots with water. Take it to the governor of the feast. Many times the instructions of grace don't make sense. Noah, I'm going to send rain from heaven. They had never seen rain before in the days of Noah. Hello? Read the story in Genesis. They had never seen rain. In fact, the record we have in Genesis chapter 3 was that mist will come out from the ground. And water the soil and vegetation. They had never seen the clouds open and rain fall. Not one drop of rain, according to the records of scripture, had fallen from the sky. Definitely not the amount of rain that fell in the days of Noah. So there was no reference to what God was telling him. And then God told him to build an ark on dry ground. And it built that ark for decades. Hello, somebody. It wasn't an ark that he built in two months or three months or one year or ten years. Decades. Now, I'm using that as an example. 
I'm not asking you to go and build an ark tomorrow. And I'm not telling you that ah, you're going to have to stay in faith for 10 years or 20 years or 100 years. Like now, That's not my point. Hello, somebody. But my point is, let me come down to where you are. Your apostle says, join me for school of discipleship for the next 30 days. Every day, 1 p.m., let's pray together for 30 minutes. Join me. I want to teach you supernatural. Simple. Obedience of faith. I kept reminding all our church workers yesterday. We had our workers meeting yesterday. They are working in the church. We want you to be coming 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Not 8.10. Not 8.15. Not 8.20. Obedience of faith. Say that again. Obedience of faith. Let's learn to listen to detail that God gives us. Hello, somebody. And let's respond in faith. Fill the water pots with water. Take it to the governor. He did not explain to them that the water will turn to wine. Now, did those servants turn the water to wine? Come on, talk to me, church. Who turned the water to wine? Grace. Hello? Did Noah save his family? No. But the ark that God told him to build, that he believed, and demonstrated his faith by obeying, saved him and his family. Let me say this to somebody here. God will tell you something in January that will bring deliverance to your household in December. God will tell you something in 2023. Let me go back in time. That will help you greatly in 2025. That's how you receive grace. Through the obedience of faith. Through one man's sin, one man's disobedience, death came upon all mankind. Through one man's obedience, grace and righteousness has come upon all. Hallelujah. Let me close. This is really where I'm going this morning. Glory be to God. Number three, grace responds to honor. Somebody say honor. And this is the way the Spirit of God told me. When you obey the instructions of faith by honoring the vessel that God uses to bring that instruction. That's how the flow of grace operates. Grace responds to honor. I want to go back to this thing I said about Dr. K. It's not okay for our apostle to call a meeting and you can join the meeting and you won't join the meeting. Honor that vessel that God is using to bring the word. It was in the devotional today. I had not read the devotional. I didn't even know. And I want to encourage everyone to read that devotional again today. Many are missing out on the benefits of grace because they lack honor for the person that God is using. Notice it wasn't Jesus that came to preach to those servants. It was Mary that spoke to them. That's just a symbol of how God works. Sir, God is not going to appear to you in your bedroom most times. I'm not saying you can't have visions and revelations of heaven. God will talk to you like I'm talking to you this morning. God will talk to you through your spouse. Can I get a witness? How many people have ever received a message from their spouse from God? Raise your hand. You knew it was God. But men, men, where are you? Men. <laughs> God can talk to you through your friend. One prophet in the Bible, God spoke to him through a donkey. It, it got that bad. God had checked, this one is not listening to his pastor. He's not listening to his wife. He's not listening to his friend. He's not even listening to the government. Let's try donkey. As the last card, after that donkey was, a, was an angel with a sword. <laughs> That was the, the, the donkey told him there's an angel, can't you see, with a sword. <laughs> oh boy. Hallelujah. There's an angel with a sword. God speaks to us through men. He gave apostles, prophets, 
evangelists, pastors and teachers for the edification of the saints to equip them for the work of the ministry. Matthew chapter 13. Hallelujah. Matthew 13. Let's read from verse 57. So they were offended at him. Let, let me open the text and not just from my notes. Hallelujah. You know this story when Jesus came to his hometown. And the Bible said he opened the scriptures and he preached to them. But they belittled him. The Bible said they were offended at him. So they were offended at him. Verse 57. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not many mighty works there because of what? Their unbelief. So look at what we are talking about. Oh. We are saying grace responds to faith. Am I right? And one powerful path of faith that we want to focus on is obedience of faith. Obedience of faith. One way we can measure faith is how much are we obeying to the things God is telling us. Not that by the time you leave church, you've forgotten what God said. The instructions God said. And one way, look at the way this unbelief manifested. See, they just didn't honor the man. They didn't honor, they didn't respect him. Honor means respect. And it actually means you carry that person up so that what he's speaking, the grace upon him can flow down into your life. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. As a church, that's what we need to do. Oh, hallelujah. You guys have been very quiet on me. Oh. <laughs> Let me close. Genesis chapter 27. I'm sure we're all familiar with this story. When Isaac was about to die and he wanted to transfer the blessing or transfer grace upon Jacob. From verse 2, he said to him, Behold, now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now, therefore, please listen to this. I, I, many times we quote this text. I want you to see something that God opened my eyes to. Now, therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me. And make me savory food such as I love. And bring it to me that I may eat. And that my soul will bless you before I die. I want to bless you. Jacob, I want to bless you. You are my firstborn son. You are the one that is supposed to carry this grace that has been upon my life. But before I pray over you, because that's how he did. That's how he transferred the blessing. He prayed over him and he laid hands on him. Go, take your weapons. Go into the field, into the forest. Go and kill game for me and make it like I like it. I mean, Isaac knew how it flowed. I want you to do something. Make a sacrifice for me that I can use to eat. Eat something that I will enjoy and let me bless you. Of course, you know the story why Jacob went out. His wife was eavesdropping. She went into the garden, made it like, like gave it to, sorry, that was Esau, sorry, and gave it to Jacob, and Jacob collected the blessing because Isaac thought it was Esau that brought it. But he demanded, is somebody hearing me this morning? He demanded for that, just honor me. Honor me. Do something sacrificial that will honor me. And the blessing flowed upon his life. Hallelujah. Grace, it will respond to our faith. It will respond particularly when we obey. Obey instructions. And when we honor the person that God uses to instruct us. And I want to challenge us as a church. 
Let, let's do this for the next 30 days. We've already done one week. As we step into the second week. Just for the purpose of obeying instructions. Participate in this discipleship program. Hello, somebody. Just for the purpose. Just to honor, let's even say we want to just honor Dr. K. Honor him. We started doing something a few months ago. 3 a.m. The service takes place Friday night. It's push, the last Friday of every month in Chicago. Dr. K instructed that everybody should join online. 9 p.m. in Chicago is about 3 a.m. here. For honoring him, let's join. Wake up 3 a.m. Join. Let grace flow. To me, I don't see any difference between join my service 3 a.m. and fill the water pots with water and take it to the governor. I don't see any difference. But what did those servants add? Oh, no. They told us to fill water pots. They said we carry it. Oh, no. Ah, pastor, it's going to cost me that sacrifice. He said, take your quiver and your bow. If it means that for the next three days you won't watch YouTube and all the things you do on so that just to join that meeting. Sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. So, when he said he came to his own and his own did not receive him, two major things I want to emphasize. As an expression of faith, number one, they obeyed what he said and they honored him. They took his invitation seriously. Look at what the people in his hometown said. Let, let me read it to your hearing again. Go back to that Matthew chapter 13. And let's compare to maybe that's what some of us are doing when we call a meeting that Dr. K calls. Just maybe if you are the one that this scripture is talking to you, you will know. When God speaks to us, we know. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Matthew 13, let me read from verse 54. So the Bible is very, very wise. He's going to say something that you know is you see yourself inside there now. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished. When Dr. K comes from meeting, they are astonished. How did he know that was me? Word of knowledge and all that. Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Look at what the, from there they switched. They were astonished. They saw all the things he was doing. Verse 55. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers, James, Joseph, and Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Where did he get, <laughs> where did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. He just belittled him. And let me tell you something I've noticed about men of God and ministry. If you want to find something to use to belittle them, you will find it. You will find it. Because they are, at the end of it, men. They are not God. They are what? Men of God. They are men. So you want to find an excuse not to? You will find. But I'm telling you, if you will honor that person. And th that, that even goes to me here as your senior pastor. Honor, just lift him up. Grace will flow. Even for rascal men of God that we read about in scriptures, God still used them to heal people. Remember when Anna was believing God for the fruit of the womb and she was praying in the temple, praying. And when Eli came, Eli, God had more or less abandoned the man and everything because of the way he was handling things with his children. He was already accusing her, ah, why are you drunk? And I said, no, I'm not drunk. I'm just of heavy of heart. And she told her story and he just blessed her. That was the year everything turned around for them. Hallelujah. You will never find a perfect man. But just watch around him. Say by their fruit you will know them. You will see the signs of God. You will see the grace of God at work in their lives. And when you find something, use that to lift them up. Hello somebody. And let grace flow. Somebody say, I will let grace flow into my life. Hallelujah. Every mountain shall be made a plain. You will finish every project and you will be successful. And you will do it how? By grace. 
Rise up on your feet. Lift your hands to heaven this morning. Thank you, Father. Somebody say, I receive grace for this new week, for this new season, every area of my life. The grace of God that has been sent to me, it begins to flow. No obstacle from today in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, lift your voice, let's pray in the Holy Ghost. No obstacle unbelief will not block the flow of grace disobedience will not block the flow of grace dishonor will not block the flow of grace i believe i believe i believe the word of god i will obey every instruction and even when i have to make sacrifices to obey if it will cost me something because of honor i will obey that instruction can somebody pray this morning your situation is not beyond what grace can handle for you because it's not as bad as what noah went through if noah could find grace in those dark days on the face of the earth I tell you today, you can find grace. Hey, yata sataya. Learn to believe the word of God. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it for yourself. Learn to obey simple instructions that come to you by the Spirit of the Lord and learn to honor, honor, honor the man of God, the vessel that God is using to bring that word to you. Come on, lift your hands, everybody, one more time and say, Thank you, Father, for the supply of grace for me right now. Lift your hands and say, I receive it. Come on, shout it out loud. I receive it. Grace, grace. In the name of Jesus. One more time, pray in the Holy Ghost. In in the name of Jesus. Listen to me very carefully. Very, very important. Isaac knew there was sheep inside their compound. When he told you so, take your bow and your arrow, go inside the forest. He knew. Hello? He knew. When his wife had instruction, um, he gave Esau she went into the compound, took sheep, dressed it. She didn't go to the forest. That's why she was able to do it quickly. Before Esau could come back. But even though he knew that it would cost him something to go to the forest to look for it. And I love it when Esau came back. No, no. When Jacob came, Jacob lied. Because I said, how, how did you come so fast? Bob said, ah, it was the grace of God or the help of God that made me find it. They took the one in the compound. So they deceived him. That's sorry for another day. He knew to cost him to go. I said, well, how, how did you come so quickly? So he wanted it to cost him. Hello? I said that to tell you this. Sometimes to just obey the instructions of God and to honor God and the vessel. It may cost you something. It may cost you. From time to time. Praise God. When those costs come, as God helps you. Now, this is not to make you feel uncomfortable or anything. Sacrifice is worth it. Hallelujah. There's this phrase that we've been saying for a while now. The price, P-R-I-C-E, is never greater than the price, P-R-I-Z-E. The price is that reward of grace that you will experience. Hallelujah. The price is the sacrifice you have to make. Hallelujah. Lift your heads one more time. Say, Father, I thank you for grace grace like I've never had it before thank you that from today my story changes I experience rewards from heaven come on somebody declare I experience rewards from heaven 
that I've never experienced before. In the name of Jesus. Will you give the Lord a shout of praise this morning? Come on, you can shout louder. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. So I want everyone that can, and I know most of us can, to join us by 9 p.m. tonight for this school of disciples. It's 9 p.m. tonight. Take your bow, take your arrow, go into the forest and get your data. <laughs> Whatever you need to do. Hello, somebody. Join us. I trust God for one prayer that will just unlock something massive in your life. Hello, somebody. I trust God for one word, one revelation that will change your story. The other day, Dr. K shared a testimony. Somebody that had been believing God for the photo. He was even joking with her. Ah, you call this baby sometimes. But grace flowed. Hallelujah. About a year after, the woman had twins. There was another woman, he said, a member of the church that just had a miscarriage. And as they left the hospital, she and her husband came. And Dr. K said he was just trying to comfort them. He wasn't really, he was saying he, was, he wasn't really praying per se or believing per se. He was just trying to comfort them. Ah, for this thing that the devil did. God will give you double. And he mentioned the name. He said it was just, what he was doing, what he was doing was just trying to comfort. That's grace. She just had a miscarriage. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Only grace can restore. I lost something powerful in that testimony he shared. He said when the husband called him from the hospital, Dr. K said, I will come to the hospital to see you. So he said, man said, no, don't come. We will come to the house. See, cost, sacrifice, honor. Which one would have been more convenient for them? For them to wait in the hospital for Dr. K to come and meet them? Which he offered? Or for him to bundle his wife that just had a miscarriage and drive to his house? Talk to me. They're just because they honored, grace flowed. And he said he was even just trying to comfort them. Not that he was praying for the miracle. You will not miss out on the grace God has for you this season. Hallelujah. In this supernatural living, this is what we said on Wednesday, I'm closing. This supernatural, we said you need to examine how you are living supernaturally. That's what I want all of us to do this morning. Examine how you are living by faith. Don't look at somebody else, look at your own life. Examine. I mean, you, you, are, you are faith people, that's why you come to church on Sunday morning. You believe in God, that's why you're here. Examine how you are doing it. Are you doing it with the obedience of faith? Or you are choosing the one you will listen to, not choosing the one you will. How do you know whether it's the one you're not listening to that is going to work for you? And are you honoring the man of God, the vessel of God? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory, glory be to God. Somebody shout hallelujah one more time. Let's be seated as we wrap up this morning. We're going to give, we're going to honor the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. And let's just get set to do that. And, um, we we'll welcome Dick and Alain to do that. Please put your hands together for him. God bless you. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. And I appreciate the Lord for the blessing that Pastor T is to this house. If you were blessed by the ministration this morning, put your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, we are going to give our offerings uh, right away, um, our tithes and offerings. But before we go into that, just a quick story here. Um, I want to mention a particular kind of offering, which is project offering. We've heard several times that there are projects going on um, in church. And I just want to encourage someone um, who the Lord may have been speaking to uh, to give to some of the projects that are going on in church. I remember several years ago, about th 
13 years ago, Pastor Noel was preaching. Then um, we used to have a, a carpet. I don't know how many people can remember at that time. And one of the, the carpet was dog-eared, meaning that um, the edges were raised. And Pastor Noel kept tripping as he was preaching. And the Holy Spirit told me, change that carpet. We just got married. Our house was like Genesis 1-1 at that time, was empty and void. So why would I be able to buy a carpet? But I knew clearly, just like Pastor T is saying, the obedience of faith. We were trusting God for furniture, but our house was empty. I knew it was the voice of God, so I called Pastor Joel and said, please follow us home. We didn't even have a car, so he drove us home. And when he got to our house, he was because I told him why he needed to follow us so that we could pick it and just give that uh, seed right away. Um, I didn't want my mind to set in. I told my wife, and then we agreed, and he followed us home. But I saw the shock on his face when he walked into our house and realized that the house was empty and was only that rug that was there. Long and short of it, we gave it, but furniture carpet is no longer our issue today. Why am I saying this? There may be someone here who is looking at the curtain in this church and saying, why are we having this kind of curtain? God is talking to you. We want to buy a new mixer. There are certain things that we have itemized that we need to buy. There are projects that we need to do in this church. As you give your offerings and your tithe this morning, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Speak over your offering. And whatever the Holy Spirit is ministering to you about, regarding the lists that we have given, if there's anything more specific that you would like to give, please speak to um, Deacon Agbebe, and we can always work that out. Can we be upstanding as we give our tithes and offering in this house? Hallelujah. Say a word over your offering. Say a word. Deliberately say, release the outcome of your faith over that offering. Ask God what you want regarding that offering. What is the end of your faith? Speak it. Speak it to God. From your mouth to God's ears, as we say. Believe in Jesus' name. Father, we give you praise because you are the one who empowers us to prosper. Thank you because our future is bright. You are our health insurance. You are our wealth insurance. It's because of you we can face the economy. Because we know that you have our back. We know that you are our father. As we give this morning is an expression of our faith in you. That he who began a good work in us is able to complete it. That he who started with us will take us to the end. That he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask, imagine, or think. That you are able to keep us. You are able to help us. That you are able to guide us. That you are able to bless us with ideas. You are able to bless us. We need things, we great things of life. We give you all the glory. As we drop this offering, we drop the level of poverty. As we drop this offering, we drop sickness. As we drop this offering, we drop failure. As we drop this offering, we drop fear. As we drop this offering, we drop disease in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Father, we love you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you believe you are going to experience something great this week, give your offerings with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. All right. You are welcome. This is Kingsword International Church, Ikeja. Um, our core values in this church, we're glad to welcome you again. Our core values in this church is that we are a people of the word and the spirit. We believe that we are loved by God. We believe we are covered by grace and you have heard that this morning and that we are driven by purpose. This is the kind of church that the Holy Spirit has led you into this morning. And we want to welcome you into this family. If you are joining us for the very first time, 
If you fall in that category in the auditorium this morning, please raise your hands. We'd like to recognize and welcome you especially. Um, look around. Is there anyone like that who's joining us for the first time? All right. Let's look online. If you're joining us online and this is your very first time, we really appreciate you. This is King's Word. I hear somebody clapping. Is there someone new? All right. You're clapping for people online. Come on. Go ahead. All right. We love you. We believe that it's not by chance that you have come to join us online this morning, but we'd like to hear from you. Um, please send us a message at bit.ly forward slash. Oh, there's one new person. Put your hands together. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. All right. The ushers have taken over. All right. But if you're joining us online, uh, please send us a message through bit.ly forward slash e service guest. Or send an SMS to 0810-000-0650. And we'll be glad to hear from you. All right. We have upcoming events. I'll run through them very quickly. These are weekly uh, activities that we have in church. Sunday service happens again. Next week, Sunday is in seven days' time. It's at 9 a.m. However, uh, we have a healing school going on. Um, through an instruction of God to our pastor, uh, Pastor Tunde Akiemi, is taking the healing school, and this is specifically for people who are trusting God for um, for their health. And and um, we, we I think we started this morning, and it's been such a great time. That healing See, last school week starts every Sunday at eight a.m. Hallelujah. Midweek Hallelujah. services hold at six thirty p.m. every Wednesday. And also, we are a praying church. We pray every day, Mondays to Fridays at 6 a.m. Please join us on MixLR, all right? Mondays to Friday. Now, you can also find the daily devotional on the Kingsword app. So we encourage you to download the Kingsword app um, on your phone, and you'll find the daily devotionals there. If you'd like to listen to the daily devotional, that feature is also there as well. Now, other upcoming events, 30 Days of Discipleship in the Supernatural. Pastor T has talked extensively about that. Uh, it's happening um, from the 1st of April to the 30th of April. Now, Mondays to Friday, 1 p.m., and Saturdays at 9 p.m. I don't need to belabor that. Now, upcoming six hours global day of prayer. What that means, if you're excited about that, put your hands together for the Lord Jesus. All right. I call it prayer in incubation. I mean, what happens is that we come here on that specific day and we pray extensively for six hours. And it's always been a very powerful time before God and prayers get answered. That's going to happen on Saturday, the 4th of May. So please do well to mark your calendars. Now, our teens in church are having their youth conference. Uh, it's going to happen on Thursday, the 11th of April. That's this Thursday, 11th of April. And of course, also on Saturday, 13th of April. And it will culminate on Sunday, the 14th of April. Other announcements, Sunday and Wednesday messages are available on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts and at Kingsword Ikeja. You can also watch this service back on YouTube at Kingsword Ikeja. Now, if you have testimonies, and I believe that you do, if you think well, you will thank well. Uh, send your testimonies to massivewonders at kingsword.org or send, a, send it as a message on WhatsApp to 810 -000 -0650. Um if you're planning to get married, uh, we encourage you to contact the church at least six months before your wedding date so that we can engage you properly. Uh, devotional, daily devotional can be found on Kingswood app. I think I've mentioned that before. Now, do like and follow us on all of our social media platforms. We are simply at Kingswood Ikeja, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or on YouTube. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. All right, please welcome with me, Pastor Lair.
Hallelujah. Can you give a neighbor a victorious smile this morning? If your, if your neighbor's smile doesn't have a tone of victory, you can change your neighbor right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shall we rise as we make our bold declarations this morning of who we are and what our experience will be? And we'll also take out a time um, singing together a family song thereafter. So, we'll like, I would like us to take the King's Word Creed this morning. Um, media, are we ready? I would like us to do this together. All right. Just declare after me. I am King's Word. I have no taste for mere religion without change. I live a result-oriented, purpose-driven life based on principles in God's Word. I'm a man of the Word, yielded to the Spirit. I'm committed to God's purpose for my life. I take my place in God's supernatural army and in His agenda for the earth and my generation. As sure as God helps me, somebody declare boldly as sure as god helps me it means that god will help you as sure as god helps me i will not give up i will not cave in i will not quit i will not die until my job is done and victory is won in jesus name amen amen um as we wrap up service this morning i'd like to just catch hands with a neighbor as we sing our family song this morning. All right. Come on. Spirit bound together by God's love We're sharing one vision Taking the world into the nation We celebrate one The supernatural life and call We are one in unity We're the King's Word family Come on, once we bound together by God's love. We're sharing one vision, one vision, taking the world into the nation. We celebrate as one, the supernatural life of God. We are one. Come on, let's lift our hands up. We are the King's Word family. King's Word family, that's what we are. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. That was a word from the throne of grace. Hallelujah. So we have learned today the workings of grace. Grace responds to faith and the pastor T actually took time to talk about the obedience of faith. Honoring the vessel that God has sent to you. How do you honor the vessel? By obeying his instructions. And when you obey the instructions, grace, the grace of God is poured out, is released unto you. So this week we believe that you go in this might, in this word that you have heard, and the grace of God will be manifest in your life. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again some other time. God bless you.